Christmas, just like the ones I used to know. Now, I can say that because I grew up in a place called Boston, Massachusetts, where it's cold in the winter and usually snow in the ground around this time of year. I chose to relocate to Southern California because there is no snow in the ground this time of year unless you go visit. It's the top of a mountain and knows where it belongs. And it's bright and beautiful and go to the beach. That's the kind of time I like. Now, it's interesting, though, because this particular I'm Curious About Christmas Part 2 is all about song. Because what is a holiday without song? It animates, it enlivens, it causes revelry. It enables you to recall incidences in a most beautiful, wondrous way. So it happens to be that the songs that are around Christmas, uh, aside from one particular one, are very modern in the sense that they're, let's say, over the past 80, not even 100 years, let's say 80 years plus minus, especially the most famous of all which is, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, which, in my humble opinion, is sort of the essence of what's happening with the Christmas holiday. It is, in the American experience, very ecumenical, which means it's no longer a specifically religious holiday, even though obviously it has enormous religious underpinnings and overtones, but it's really about the American experience. Because if you know something about that song, and if you don't, I'll tell you. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, which is so beautiful, so melodic, so amazing, and the history of it is so fascinating. It, of course, was written by Irving Berlin. Now, Irving Berlin is as Jewish as you can imagine. <laughs> the refugee from uh, pogroms in what was then called uh, Eastern Europe, Poland, Russia, depending on the, the time of the year and the, and the decade and such. And he escaped that. He came to America. He fell in love with America, as most immigrants do. And he was one of the great geniuses of song. And he wrote this song specifically for an event that happened in his life on December 25th. It was the death and the burial of his three-week-old son, which happened on December 25th, 1928. He wrote the song many years later, and it was first sung and produced on December 25th, 1941, a very important date, because if you know history, on December 7th, 1941, the United States of America was now at war with Japan and three, years, three days later, Germany announced in its foolishness to go to war with America. So we were now fighting the Axis powers, Japan and Germany and the, their supposed empires. It was sung first on December 25th, 1941, as a means of bringing benefit to the entire nation. And it did. One song brought together an entire nation and made them feel strong capable, hopeful, able. It was wondrous. Written by a Jew in Beverly Hills, California, <laughs> recalling many years prior, 13 years prior, when he buried his son on the same day of December 25th. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. It's such an amazing, powerful song. Whenever you hear it, of course, you're nostalgic for certain things. And then, of course, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. What a great song that one is, isn't it? And it's the most wonderful time of the year. I'm just going to do a few things. And now we honor him. Bum, 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 bum. On my drum. <laughs> Little drummer boy. What a song. I, I used to enjoy it so much. By the way, growing up in Boston, in my teen years, uh, I would join fellow revelers, mostly Jewish, but a lot of Christians also, obviously. And we would go to Beacon Hill. It's a very fascinating part of Boston, downtown Boston, to a place called Louisburg Square, which was one of the most in those days, and still is today, one of the most uh, haughty nose upturned addresses in the city. But in those days, you could go there on the Christmas time and sing carols. 
and the police didn't bother you. <laughs> it was really something very interesting. So that's what we used to do, Louisburg Square, and then, of course, we go out and drink afterwards. That's another story. And then you have this uh, great song called It's a Holly Jolly Christmas <laughs> by a person named Burl Ives, B-U-R-L-I-V-E-S. Now, I've seen Burl Ives on television. Most people never heard of him, but it, you know the song. So it was just amazing. That's what music can do. God rest ye merry gentlemen. And may nothing you dismay. What a great song. And then of course, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. <laughs> Rudolph the red nose reindeer. I mean, this stuff just keep pouring out, and I'm only touching a few of them. Silver bells, silver bells. It's Christmas time in the city. Not sex in the city, Christmas time in the city. And then you have the great new song by Maria Carey. All I want is you for Christmas. And then this wonderful song that has caused such controversy over the past few years. Baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> okay, it's a Christmas song. But it's great. It's wonderful. Don't get upset. Love them. And then there are dozens and dozens of more. Andy Williams has whole albums which still sell for Christmas songs. And then the one that to me is one of the most remarkably beautiful pieces of music ever brought into the human arena. <laughs> the Ode to Joy, which is how we're going to end this particular part. Thank you so much for listening. We love you. Make it a great one. And... Uh, Go forth, live exuberantly, spread the seeds of joy, happiness, peace, and love.